In this week's Blizz Planet Weekly, we have an awesome giveaway involving a signed Mr. Pandaria Collector's Edition, new features in the Heart of the Swarm beta, whether or not multi-boxing is legal in Diablo 3, and is the new Warcraft movie going to be a success or a big old flop? Hey everybody, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Planet Weekly. I know it's been a week, you missed me. Alright, let's get right into that World of Warcraft Weekly News Roundup. Here's the beef. So first up, the PTR patch notes have been updated for 5.2. And these new patch notes include some changes for looting, raid, scenarios, reputation, and PvP gear. Check it out. To encourage raid finder groups to preserve each time a group wipe happens on a boss fight, all players in the group receive a stacking buff that increases health, damage dealt, and healing done by 5%. Now this stacks up to 10 times. The buff is cleared once the boss has been killed. Also, Alliance and Horror characters can now run the opposite faction scenarios added in 5.1. So the Dagger in the Dark scenario, previously only opened the Horde, will be available to the Alliance, and a little patient scenario will now be available to the Horde. Still grinding for Nat Pagel reputation by fetching him the rare Pandaren Fist? The reputation gains have been increased from this, and the chance of hooking this rare fish has been increased as well. Last but not least, a new vendor has been added offering to sell Conquest PvP gear for honor to characters that have earned 27,000 Conquest during the season. The vendors can be found near the existing Pandaren PvP vendors. So enough about the game, let's talk about the upcoming Warcraft movie. Now very recently, Duncan Jones, now he's the director of Source Code and Moon, has been signed by Legendary Pictures to direct the upcoming Warcraft movie that, you know, we've been hearing about since like 2006. Now originally Sam Raimi was signed on for this thing, a very much, you know, more well-known director, uh, but, you know, he had other creative projects and eventually the script was also scrapped. Yeah, try saying that three times fast. Now Charles Levitt last year started writing a new script and he, we started hearing rumblings about the movie again. Chris Metzen, uh, who will be a co-producer, mentioned this at the Mr. Pandaria release event. And Nick Carpenter has been talking about it a lot on Twitter. So it's definitely still happening. Now, production is currently scheduled to begin in fall 2013 with a release date in 2015. Now, we have a contest for you, right? You heard it in the opening. So guess what? We have a Mr. Pandaria collector's edition signed by the development team. How awesome is that, right? What do you have to do to win it? Subscribe to our channel and then throw down a comment on this video. You can talk about how cool that is, talk about the movie, talk about the games, talk about my beard, we don't care. But subscribe to the channel, throw down a comment, and you just might win a Mr. Pandaria Collector's Edition signed by the development team. It's cool stuff. All right, let's talk StarCraft II. You want a piece of me, boy? So in Heart of the Swarm, patch 2.0.3 has been released in the beta. And with it, we got some huge new features coming to Heart of the Swarm. Here you go. Heart of the Swarm beta patch 2.0.3 has hit the beta servers. And there are a number of new systems, updates, and a fix for Mac users. Some new replay features have been added, such as Watch the Others, which allows you to watch replays in sync with other players on Battle.net. Take Command is a new feature that allows you or your group to take control of selected player armies while watching a replay. Recover Game allows you to recover a prematurely ended game from a replay. Versus AI mode has been enabled in the beta and players will be able to challenge an AI opponent that scales in difficulty. Training mode has also been enabled where you'll be able to work your way up from basic StarCraft gameplay skills to greater challenges. Several tweaks have also been made to polish the new user interface. Last but not least, a new small balance update has been made and the Mac version of the beta is now working properly again. All right, hope you guys are really enjoying all those cool new features. Let us know what you think of them. You can always, you know, put that down in your comment when you're trying to win that collector's edition Mr. Pandaria. But right now, Blizzard has a bit of a call to action going out. They need people to test the leveling system in Heart of the Swarm beta. And so they're offering up some rewards, okay? Now this is how they at least initially structured it. If you reach the top level of 30 in any one class, you'll unlock an exclusive character portrait specific to that race. Now if you reach a total of 90 levels, so that's 30 in each race, you not only unlock all three portraits, but you also get a feat of strength. 
Now, this will be tied to your live account when the Heart of the Swarm is released. However, announced like five minutes before we actually started filming this, uh, Blizzard has decided to back this down, all right? They said that because they're having some issues with the leveling in the beta, they're instead gonna reduce this requirement to five levels instead of 30. So you can get there even quicker. So get out there, get some levels, help Blizzard figure out how to you know, even out this system before the actual game comes out. That's what the beta's for, right? All right, get in there and tell them you know, what's working, what's not working. Enough with StarCraft II. Let's talk Diablo three. Stay a while and listen. So we're gonna start off talking about multiboxing which is honestly kind of nutters. You know, I, I, I had to go and look up exactly what this was, and then you see this crazy image here, which just kind of made my brain explode a little bit at the entire concept. But it's the idea of someone playing more than one account, all on one computer, and controlling all the characters at the same time, which potentially is really just mind-boggling. Uh, but it's been a heavily debated topic on Blizzard uh, around Blizzard games for a long time. Now, people in World of Warcraft have been known to be running up to like five characters all at once and controlling them all at the same time, running entire dungeons on their own, which is a little bonkers. But of course, it's now coming up in Diablo as well. People have been wondering, is this legal? Is this illegal? You know, it, uh, the, you know there's a lot of debate going on. Well, finally, we have an official blue response or on the message boards, at blizzard.com, an actual response from a community manager. Now, European community manager Veneris piped in and said it's tricky because there are several circumstances where multiboxing is completely legal, and of course, some circumstances where it isn't. Now, if you legitimately own all copies of the game that you're talking about and you are legitimately controlling all of them, in other words, you're not using automation to control them, it's perfectly legal. A little crazy, but it's perfectly legal. However, of course, if you're pirating copies of the game or if you're using any sort of like macros or bots or anything to run automation on some of those accounts, that is a violation of the terms of service and that can get you banned. So there is the exact stance on it. So, you know, you see someone multiboxing, hard to say whether they're doing something legally or illegally, but that's the official verdict coming down from Blizzard. Now, patch 1.0.7, maybe it's getting released next week. Now, hear us out. There was an extremely small patch that came out to the PTR this week. It's basically, you know, just some new effects for reflect damage and bone armor, some minor monk changes. But with 1.0.7 brewing in the PTR for some time now, and these little minor changes, does this mean maybe we'll see 1.0.7 go live as early as this upcoming Tuesday? The signs, if you have followed, you know, how Blizzard releases their patches, certainly seems to be pointing that way, that it is right around the corner. All right, that does it for Diablo 3. It's time for, you know it, you love it, the Blizzard Bitch Session. So let's talk about that Warcraft movie, all right? Now this has been, of course, as you can imagine, a hotly debated topic. And we just talked about the announcement of Duncan Jones now directing the movie. So there's a lot of people who are excited, who are talking on different, you know, forums and social networks about how excited they are for the movie. And, you know, equally, if not more people, bitching about this, saying it's going to be terrible, it has no chance at being good. And, you know, we see some arguments on both sides, so let's talk about them. First off, let's talk about that recent StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm opening cinematic that was fucking amazing, all right? It was gorgeous. We would love to see them just do some big CGI movie, but that's not what they're planning. They are going full live action. And there's another big complaint that seems to be coming around a lot. The people say... It's too late to make this movie. Nobody plays WoW anymore. Well, kind of preaching the choir here. You guys are watching the video. Obviously, you're paying attention to WoW. And I know people who are playing. There's still millions of people playing. But let's move into this, okay? First off, this is not a World of Warcraft movie. This is a Warcraft movie, all right? This intellectual property has been around since 1994. Almost 20 years now, they've been building this universe, building these stories, building all this stuff up, all right? 20 years. It's also been wildly successful. Over the last eight years, millions of people have been spending significant amounts of time in Warcraft through the MMO, the world of Warcraft as it is. But let's think about this. 20 years. Oh, that's too long. Okay. Lord of the Rings. Huge, massively successful franchise. Now they got The Hobbit going out. You know, those books were written in the 1930s. Or The Avengers. The Avengers is now one of the highest grossing films of all time. That comic book originally started out in the 1960s. And I'll tell you what, there are a hell of a lot less people reading comic books than there are playing World of Warcraft. Plain and simple. And you know what those movies did for that, those franchises, those intellectual properties? 
they made them bigger. They brought them to, peop- to the forefront of people's minds. Do you know what happened to comic book sales for Iron Man comics when the Iron Man movies came out? Pew! Straight up. That's what happens every time. I mean, the, the movies make a lot of money on the, their own, but it pushes the brand. So many people went out and started buying the Lord of the Rings books when the movies came out. Same thing is happening now with The Hobbit. It breathes new life into these properties. It's, it's not too late. And if anything, it might be the perfect timing for all we know. <coughs> so this whole argument of it's too late, please go sit down, to, you know, wait for the next argument. Okay, this one, I admit, has much more to it. There's a really shitty track record for movies based on video games. I Really bad. There's been a few exceptions, like the first Resident Evil, that was pretty good, you know, pretty gory little flick. Uh, the first Mortal Kombat movie, that thing was cheesy as all get out, but admittedly it was pretty fun. Personally, I'm a fan of the Silent Hill film. Talk about scary. That I love scary movies, and that one is right up there for me. But by and large, they're not blockbuster hits. They're fairly low budget. They're just trying to cash in on a known property. And they usually suck. But here's the thing. They've been talking about this for a long time, since 2006, and we know they have confirmed it will have a budget of over $100 million. So that's more than the Tomb Raider movies, which, you know, has some pretty good production values to them. But this large budget also means they can maybe hire Weta, W-E-T-A, uh, who, if those of you aren't familiar, they made the weapons, the armor, the costumes, the sets, and the creatures for the Lord of the Rings movies. And plus it gives them good special effects money, all right? Now, not that those are necessarily the things that make or break a good film, but it certainly does help. Uh, you know, if you've got orcs and goblins riding around on siege weapons against the Alliance, you want them to look pretty good. But budget isn't the only thing, all right? Blizzard is very involved with the movie. How often can you say that, that the developer or the publisher of a game is actually heavily involved with the movie? And as articulate as Blizzard is, this is probably a good thing, all right? They've been living in this world for 20 years. They've been building it. They've been eating, sleeping, living, breathing this world for a long time. Now, Blizzard, Legendary Pictures, and Duncan Jones are all approaching this movie that they want to engage the viewer in this world. This is a mistake a lot of movies based on games make. They focus much more on the game rather than the world the game takes place in. Now, Duncan Jones is a hardcore gamer. That's not necessarily a a huge, huge thing, but we think it should help. He wanted to direct this movie two years ago and has stated that if any game franchise would make a good movie, this is the one. He was even jealous that Sam Raimi got the job before he did. (coughs) But making a good video... He wants to make a good movie based on a video game, if anything, to prove the naysayers wrong. Now, let's hope he doesn't overextend himself trying to accomplish this. But still, with $100 million at his back now, for perspective, he made source code for $35 million. Hopefully, he can actually accomplish this. Now, based on some recent Twitter conversations, he sounds, sounds like Duncan Jones will be working very closely with Blizzard on this project. He will be meeting with their creative team, including Chris Metzen, Nick Carpenter, other writers like James Waugh, and Cameron Dayton. All right, He's working very closely. So these are people who very much care for the Warcraft property. They care about the characters in this universe, and they want them done justice. Now, as we said before, production is set to begin fall 2013. They're hoping for a 2015 release date, which puts it in line with movies like Avengers 2, The Justice League, and Star Wars Episode Seven, So there's definitely some big competition that year, so they're really going to have to outdo themselves if they want some success. But we want to know what you guys think. Now, we're already asking you to subscribe and throw down some comments if you want to win that awesome Mr. Pandari Collector's Edition. So answering these questions can certainly be one way to throw those comments down. Now, Duncan Jones admits he's a hardcore gamer and wants to see a good video game movie get made. Do you think he'll be able to succeed where so many have failed? Or are we going to see yet another shitty video game based movie. All right, let us know in the comments. And then why don't you go visit me? I'm not so much on YouTube anymore, but I'm all over Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Chris M. Arnone, you know, writing my book, getting that thing out soon. And then head over to blizzplanet.com. All the news, reviews, great community, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment Games. We'll see you guys next time. (laughs) 